Training is about achieving a partnership with your dog which grows with the years. A well-trained dog shares the job with the shepherd. This is why one of the collie's greatest strengths is working out of sight of its handler. Out of sight, many dogs will chase rabbits or deer or go foraging for food. But when this collie goes out of sight over the hill, you can be sure that it won't be off to play or shirking any responsibility. It knows its job is to gather the sheep and bring them down the hill. And that is exactly what it will do. It will get on with its job. Collies can be so conscientious about their work that they will sometimes disobey a command because they feel it wouldn't get the job done properly. In the winter of 1963-64, I think it was, a very heavy snow. We actually lost a lot of sheep in the snow. And for quite, uh, quite, it must have been about 10 days after the snow, we were going out to look for beasts that were buried. Yeah. Now, some, sometimes all you see mm -hmm. is a small hole, which is their breath, yeah. uh, slightly brown round the top, yeah. uh, and to find a beast underneath. Now, remember, uh, the white dog, we'd been walking along the hill and I shouted the dog and she wouldn't come back, wouldn't come back. So yeah. in the end I went back mm -hmm. and she was standing over one of these holes, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for me to get the beast yeah. out. So she was sort of thinking yeah. to herself yeah. there, this yeah. is what we're supposed to be doing, we should be getting the yeah. sheep out. I mean, you know, we shouldn't so be going she home. Wasn't, she wasn't accepting the command. She wasn't accepting the command. Yeah. She, decided, no, you haven't done your job <laughs> No wonder our ancestors found collies such useful dogs for moving their animals around the local farm. But when it came to moving them away from the farm, the dogs became not just useful, but essential. In the earliest farming communities, People lived in small, isolated hamlets where they and their animals never strayed beyond familiar territory. But when agricultural markets developed, cattle and sheep had to be moved to locations far away from their familiar territory. And these journeys could cover not just miles, but hundreds of miles. A trade developed which involved gathering cattle and sheep from every hillside and glen in Scotland, from the Highlands and Islands, from Skye in the west, from Shetland in the north, and droving them all the way down to markets in the central belt at Creef and Falkirk. Here they were sold, mainly to English buyers, and then taken down further drove roads to destinations as far south as Liverpool, Lincoln, London and the south of England. Moving cattle and sheep across new terrain every day for weeks on end presented a lot of out-of-the-ordinary problems in controlling animals, including fording rivers and sea channels. One of the most hazardous routes was that from the island of Skye across to the Scottish mainland at Glenelg, where cattle had to be persuaded to swim the narrow sea channel with a high risk of drowning. Try persuading cattle to do that without a good strong dog. Each day the drove made its way through an environment unfamiliar to the animals and without walls, fences or other boundaries. So control of the herd was more difficult and hence relied even more on the abilities of the dogs. This trade was an essential element in the supply of food and clothing to the whole of Britain. Without the dogs, it could never have happened. For hundreds of years, the Border Collie made it possible. Collies worked all day and every day for nothing more than a bite of food and a night's rest. We owe them a debt of gratitude. By the end of the 19th century, 
Road and rail transport began to take over the movement of livestock and the droving era came to an end. Cattle and sheep now go to market in trucks. Of course, collies still do all the work of herding around British farms. But with the globalisation of the food trade, British farmers find it harder to eke out a living from cattle and sheep. In his mid-70s, Tony is the youngest sheep farmer in his part of Yorkshire. The next generation is not following on from him. The future of farming in Britain is uncertain. So one wonders where the future lies for the Border Collie. Some will continue in herding. As long as we have some kind of farming industry in Britain, dogs will be needed, but in fewer numbers than in the past. Perhaps that future lies abroad. European farmers rely mainly on the big bruiser biting dogs, but they only walk alongside the sheep to protect them. Look closer at these European flocks and you'll find among them a familiar black and white dog, the one that actually does all the work of herding them, the Border Collie. Collies are used throughout all the countries of the world because of their unrivaled ability as herding dogs. Surely it would be a sad day if they could no longer earn their living in this country. But what are the alternatives? The Collie's ability to herd sheep and cattle is due to its high level of intelligence. Academic research confirms that the Border Collie is not just in the top half of the canine intelligence hierarchy. It is the top dog in that hierarchy. This is the most intelligent dog on the planet. Surely this intelligence can be applied elsewhere. Jess, don't be daft. That stick's too big for you. You're only a dog. No, Jess, you're not just a dog. You're a border collie. Oh, Jess. Jess. Oh. Where's the stick?